This video series will provide an introduction to the Dolby IMS 3000 web user interface. The overview is made up of four short videos. This is the final video of the series, which will walk the user through setup and maintenance of the device. The setup and maintenance menu consists of six menu options. The first menu option is playback settings and is separated into three tabs. CineLister configuration allows the user to modify the seek values when clicking the forward and backward buttons in playback or setting the emergency recovery value in the event of a power loss or other failure. The first day of the week can also be specified in the CineLister scheduler. The Live Manager tab is where a live CPL element can be created that will playback via StreamIt or HDMI. Once the live CPL is created, it can be played and scheduled like a normal CPL in CineLister. If using the License StreamIt functionality, indicate the stream's network configuration under the StreamIt Manager tab. The Command Terminal provides a command line interface that can be used for advanced functionality. Device Management is broken out into three manager tabs. The Device Manager is where devices are added and managed, like projectors, subtitle engines, external audio processors, and automation devices, among others. An example of a required device would be a projector, while other items such as automation devices are optional and dependent on individual installation needs. The Content Feed Manager is an application used to create a network map of cinema servers. Specify which type of content should be scanned for the IMS 3000. Once configured and accessible over FTP, the networked server will appear in the ingest scan tab as a location from which content can be ingested. The NAS Manager tab is where Dolby approved network attached storage devices can be added. When adding a device, the vendor, model, IP address, and directory need to be entered. Once configured, the NAS will be available for use and content can be ingested and played back directly from the NAS. The maintenance menu consists of five tabs. The Automatic Log Uploader Manager tab is used to schedule a daily, weekly, or monthly generation of the security or system logs. To create this reoccurring schedule, an FTP site will be required. In the Manager Configuration pop-up window, the user should enter all necessary data to set the scheduled time when the log file will be created and the FTP credentials that will be used to access the upload site. The Backup Manager tab is used to create and manage system backups for the SMS playback part of the system. Backups onto the RAID occur daily, but can also be done anytime via FTP or an external media drive. To restore the system from a backup, Select the backup from the list and click on the icon to select the items to be restored. Examples of items include system settings, KDMs, identity certificates, DoReMe configuration files like the device manager, and network settings. The CP Backup Manager is where the cinema audio processor settings can be backed up, restored, or reset. Restorable data includes auditorium configuration, EQ and level presets, array delays, and preferences. The Log Operator Maintenance tab shows scheduled maintenance tasks that need to be done periodically to keep the system performing as expected. When a maintenance task is required, the system will notify the user via the notification system in the status panel. After performing maintenance, click New and record the entry. The Threshold Manager tab is used to adjust the notification threshold for various items like temperatures and voltages. It is recommended that users leave these at the default settings. The System Settings menu is made up of seven tabs. The Date and Time tab allows the adjustment of the system time and time zone, as well as the ability to add an NTP server to synchronize the time. System real-time clock adjustments are limited to 360 seconds per calendar year. The Events Configuration tab allows the user to execute an action at the end of a show. For example, use Run a Macro to change the input of the IMS 3000 from DCP playback to HDMI. The Networking Configuration tab allows the user to modify the hostname of the server 
which is recommended if there are multiple servers in the theater. The IP address of all three gigabit Ethernet ports can also be modified here. From the Power Management tab, the server can be put into standby mode, restarted, or shut down. The Account Manager tab enables the management of the default users associated with the IMS 3000. User passwords can be changed by clicking on the user and an Edit User window appears. New users can also be created by clicking New. The Theater Properties tab is where auditorium and facility specifications can be entered. The Licenses tab details the license agreement that needs to be read and acknowledged before using the IMS 3000. The add-on menu is currently not in use but may be used in the future. This completes Part 4 of the Dolby IMS 3000 Web UI Overview. Be sure to watch the entire series for a full understanding of the Dolby IMS 3000 web user interface.